Recently, I visited the Tank Museum in Dorset. It is a spectacular collection of tanks and possibly the world's largest and best collection of military vehicles, armoured vehicles and tanks. Over the next few weeks, we'll be creating a new video series documenting many of the world's greatest and most historic tanks. To begin with, we shall show you around some of the incredible Tank Museum and tell you a brief summary of some of the tank's histories. As always, if you do enjoy our videos and to stay tuned on our new series, please support the channel by subscribing. First of all, we are taken to a rotating plinth, which shows us the incredible Little Willy tank. Created in 1915, it weighs over 16 tonnes. Made in the UK too, and fitted with a Daimler petrol engine, it did not see service in the trenches. This tank was used as a prototype, however, it could not feasibly cross trenches. This is credited as being the first tank ever made, although tracked vehicles such as the Hornsby Tractor had already been invented. The Renault FT17 was built in 1918 in France. It weighed remarkably light for a tank weighing 6.5 tonnes. The FT was the first tank to have the standard layout of the engine being located in the rear of the tank. It was armed too with a 37mm cannon and was very successful for the French. In 1940 it was still being used and over 3,000 were built. The Mark II tank on display at the Tank Museum is incredible. This Mark II took place in the Battle of Arras in the First World War. Around the outside of the vehicle you can see some damage from the battle including at the back where there are a number of different bullet holes. Inside the tank you can really get a feel for how close and tight it was inside one of these tanks. It would have had a crew of 8 men, of which would have been crammed in and given various different jobs. The Mark II would also be equipped with 4 Vickers machine guns. Overall this tank could reach a top speed of 3.7 miles per hour, but was seen as a worthy weapon of war, even if only 50 were ever produced. This Whippet or medium tank Mark A has a remarkable story. It was an extremely difficult tank to drive, it had two engines, two clutches and two gearboxes but gained its nickname from the fact it was very fast by 1918 standards. The tank on display here tells an amazing story. It was used in Fremincourt in France on the 29th of August 1918. Lieutenant Cecil Sewell dismounted from this tank in order to save the crew of another tank. In this brave and heroic act, Sewell was killed and later awarded the Victoria Cross for bravery. The whippet was remarkably light for a large vehicle, weighing in at 14 tonnes and had a maximum speed of 8.3 miles per hour. It isn't just tanks that are housed at the museum. Here you can see the colossal Crossley Chevrolet armoured car. These were used in reconnaissance missions in India. They served with the Indian Army in Iraq, Syria and Persia in 1941 to 1942. The medium tank Mark II was the main British tank from 1923 until 1935. It was created with a three pounder gun in the turret, a Vickers machine gun in each side of the hull and also a Hotchkiss light machine gun in the turret. It could travel at a speed of around 15 miles per hour, which as you can see, tanks are now becoming quicker as time passes and technology improves. Here you can see the Vickers Marquee. Made in 1928, it was a successful design commercially as it was sold to 12 nations, However, only 150 of these were actually built. This tank was highly influential to later tank design and the Type A model was fitted with two machine guns. This model however is a Type B and only has a single turret. The Panzer II is an iconic tank associated with the Nazi tactic of Blitzkrieg deployed in the Second World War to devastating effect. They first appeared around 1936 and 1937 and were regarded as a platoon's commander's tank. Initially it was a rather impressive light tank, but as they began to be outclassed by other German developments, they were relegated to a reconnaissance role. This particular model features improved armour, could travel around 40km per hour and was used in Tunisia by the Panzer Regiment 7. This particular regiment would meet an untimely end and be destroyed in May 1943. This tank is a Vickers light tank Mark VI. It was the first mass produced British tank. At the start and outbreak of World War II, it was the most significant British tank and saw service with the British Expeditionary Force in France. It was relatively useless as a fighting tank since it had extremely poor armour protection and its guns, two Vickers machine guns were useless against enemy tanks. The Shah B is a colossal beast of a tank. 
Weighing over 30 tonnes, it was the most powerful French tank in 1940. It was armed with a 75mm infantry support gun in the hull and a 47mm anti-tank gun in the one-man turret. Its size limited it however and it suffered from slow speed and also had limited range. It had been in development since the 1920s and needed to be refreshed after it had been overtaken by other models. The Panther tank has gone down in legend as possibly the best German tank designed in the Second World War. Its use of slope armour made it similar in shape to the T-34. It wasn't as thickly armoured as some of the other German tanks, such as the Tiger, however it was much greater balanced. It was one of the fastest German tanks, was highly manoeuvrable despite its huge size and was also equipped with an accurate gun. If the engine backfired though, it was known to catch fire. This particular Panther was found partly completed on the production line after the German surrender and was finished off by troops. Its colour scheme is similar to those of the Panther tanks that left the factories towards the end of the war, using a basic undercoat of red primer due to a shortage of paint as the German war effort crumbled. The T-34 has gone down in infamy as one of the best tanks ever built. This is mostly due to the fact that the Russians could mass produce it at an unprecedented scale, outnumbering the German tank production 10 to 1. This particular tank is a T-34-85 variant. By late 1943, the T-34's issues were becoming rather clear. For example, its turret was too cramped for the crew to work effectively and the gun was no longer powerful enough to knock out the advanced German late war tanks. This T-34 solved those problems, being fitted with an 85mm gun and it had a hugely long service life. One was even used in Yemen in 2015. It certainly is a remarkable tank. This German Kettenkrad was used by the Nazis as a small track vehicle which would be able to navigate over rough terrain. It can even operate without using the front wheel. It is a rather sophisticated machine, however it was rather complicated and expensive to manufacture and maintain. This particular Kettenkrad is thought to have been used in Tunisia. The Panzer III was the first German medium tank and was used in the Blitzkrieg and also in the German invasion of Russia with Operation Barbarossa in 1941. Initially, it was developed with a 15mm gun in mind, however, the availability of the 35mm cannon meant this was also adopted. It would have a crew of 5, could reach a max speed of 25 miles an hour and was also used in Africa. The Crusader Mark III were first landed in Algeria in November 1942. Following the campaign in Tunisia, they were never really used again after this. Around 5,300 were built and this particular model used a 6 pounder gun. The engine made the tank very fast along with the Christie suspension making the ride smooth, however in the desert they were rather unreliable. This M3 Grant was an American tank that was created in 1942. It weighed around 27 tonnes and it began from a need to adopt the 75mm gun before a suitable turret was made. This gun could then fire high explosive and armour piercing ammunition, inflicting huge damage to an enemy vehicle. These tanks were first used in the western desert and then were succeeded by the Sherman. First produced in 1940, the Stuart weighed around 13 tonnes. It benefited from mass production as the American troops found it rather reliable and easy to repair. It was used by the Allies in every theatre of the Second World War, however in 1944 it was obsolete as a tank and used for reconnaissance. Initially an experimental weapon, the Churchill Crocodile was designed as a flamethrowing tank. Built towards the end of the war, the fuel for the flamethrower was towed behind the tank. It was extremely effective against fortifications and a rather daunting prospect for the enemy. Sometimes tank crews inside the Crocodile would just squirt petrol at a building in which a terrified enemy would immediately surrender. An extremely brutal piece of machinery was the Crocodile. The Sherman was one of the best tanks of World War II. By 1943, it was getting past its prime and was constantly outclassed by German armaments and guns. It was decided at Lulworth Camp near Bovington by an officer to fit a British 17-pounder gun to the Sherman. This gun was now capable of knocking out the bigger enemy tanks. As it stuck out like a sore thumb, it was targeted heavily so the tank crews decided to disguise the huge gun. 
One of the fastest tanks of the Second World War, and fueled by a Rolls-Royce Meteor engine, the Cromwell cruiser was extremely popular with armoured reconnaissance regiments. The low height of the Cromwell also made it popular too. In Europe, it was outclassed by heavier German tanks, but was equipped with a 75mm gun. It was used effectively in stopping the Germans from establishing strong defences, following the Allies' quick recapture of territories across Belgium. This video was just a flavour of what is on offer at the Tank Museum. The tanks in this video probably show only half of one exhibition, that being the Tank Story Exhibition. There are many other exhibitions, including a huge showcase of even more Second World War tanks, including the King Tiger, the Tiger 131, Fury, and even the Yag Tiger. Stay tuned for our new series on the history of these vehicles, and expect archive footage as well as tours around these tanks. Once again, thank you for watching. Over the next few weeks, expect more videos on the Second World War. To support the channel, please subscribe. Once again, thank you for your time.